So, we will continue our discussion on principle of hydraulic machines and system design. Uh, today we will discuss about pumping system design. Uh, before I go to discuss about the design of pumping system rather several aspects uh, that we need to consider while designing a pumping system. Uh, let us first try to uh, discuss about one important uh, another important feature of the pump is the specific speed. Probably we have discussed about the affinity laws in my last lectures in my last lecture, but today I will discuss about the specific speed that is very important uh, when we are selecting the pump and probably I have said that, that whenever we are selecting a pump, I mean there are pump designer and pumping system designer these two are not same. So, whoever is designing the pump, uh, he should consider all those things blade angle at the inlet outlet, you know the impeller diameter speed of the pump, shape of the impeller, uh, then uh, casing design if it is you know there are diffus diffuser or uh, diffuser vanes or not, but the pumping system designer is something that he will he or she will select the pump based on the requirement of the system and based on the requirement of the you know total head, based on the requirement of the total discharge and also. But pumping system designers would also know about the specific speed that is very important. So, uh, today I will briefly discuss now before I go to discuss about the pumping system design there are several aspects of this pumping system design specific speed this is very important. So, uh, specific speed is very important for the pump I mean whatever pump it is either radial flow pumps, you know mixed flow pump or axial flow pump. So, if I now talk about let us say one case a particular case a radial flow pump. So, what is specific speed and why it is so important? So, specific speed definition is there. So, if I write the definition from definition itself I will come to know what it is, but apart from its definition we will try to drive the expression how we can uh, have the you know mathematical expression of the specific speed. So, specific speed of pump. Similarly, we will discuss when uh, we will you know uh, discuss about the hydraulic turbines then what is the specific speed of turbine. So, what is specific speed of pump? So, specific speed of a pump is, so let me uh, write the definition. Uh, from definition itself we will come to know what it is, uh, but the definition itself is not the important rather we will drive why and how it is important to select a pump. I mean pump designer uh, he should he or she should have a sound knowledge about the specific speed that is true. On the other hand whoever designing the system rather pumping system he or she also should know about the specific speed because why it is important uh, as far as the pumping operation is concerned. So, definition is this is speed of a specific speed is defined. So, specific speed is defined as the speed of very important this is speed of course, speed. So, speed of you know geometrically similar geometrically geometrically similar pumps I am writing machines in bracket that geometrically similar pumps that would that would deliver that is very important you need discharge you need discharge under unit head rather when working under unit head. So, deliver specific speed is the speed or it is defined as a speed of geometrical similar pumps I will clarify what do mean by geometrically similar pumps that would deliver unit discharge when working under unit head. So, H cube. So, this is very important that means, what is geometrically similar pumps? That means, if, if I allow a pump 
to work under unit head it will be able to deliver unit discharge and the speed at which it will do so that is the specific speed. So, what do you mean by geometrically similar bombs or geometrically similar machines? Geometrically similar machines are identical in shape not in size this is very important. So, this is the definition of the pump I have I am now underlining this you know a group of words that what is geometrically geometrically similar pumps or machines. What is geometrically similar machines or pumps? That is machines which are geometrically identical in shape. So, pumps or machines which are geometrically identical in shape, but very important is not in size, not in size. So, pumps or machines which are identical geometrically, which are geometrically identical in shape, but not in size. So, size may differ, but shape has to be geometrically similar. That means, machines which belongs to homologous series, that means, size may change from one uh, from either in decreasing order or increasing order, but their shape will remain same. And then, those series of machines are known as you know, geometrically similar machines or machine belongs to homologous series. So, now, let me clarify it in a bit uh, more you know uh, uh, accurate manner. So, if I say that I have uh, a system where I would like to uh, install a pump rather to of course, to meet the demand by the system that means, what would be the head and what would be the discharge and there I would like to install a radial flow pump. So, now whenever I am installing a particular pump that is radial flow pump may be it impeller is you know you know circular. So, it might happen that may be after a few days or after a few years system uh, to meet the system requirement again we need to install another pump. So, I will definitely try to procure the pump from the same manufacturer or it may not be if it is not possible to procure or to purchase or to buy the pump from the same manufacturer then of course, we need to go for another pump that will be supplied by a different manufacturer. So, whenever we are purchasing a pump from different manufacturer, a pumping system designer should try to supply the H cube curve of the pump, existing pump that will help the pump designer to make a you know another pump that will try to match the pump which is there in the existing pump house. Now, whenever the new pump is coming if I know the specific speed of the existing pump and if the new pump when that is being installed and if I know if the pump or if the new pump is geometrically similar, geometrically similar to the existing pump that means, if the new pump is having the same I mean impeller is circular impeller, diameter may vary depending upon the design, but I mean size may change, but the shape has to be circular. So, now what will be the you know advantage if I know the specific speed of the existing pump. So, if I know the specific speed of the existing pump then and if I know the you know specific speed of the new pump also then probably I can predict what would be the head developed by the pump for a given amount of discharge if both of the pump belongs to homologous series if they are geometrically similar that is geometrically identical in shape but not in size. Maybe size may differ, but if they are geometrically identical in shape. So, how can we now drive rather how can we mathematically express the ex, you know uh, uh, specific speed of a pump. So, uh, again if I take an example let us say a radial flow pump I have taken this example many a times. So, if I try to draw the impeller of a radial flow pump and suppose this is the impeller of a radial flow pump and pump is say rotating at an angular velocity omega in the clockwise direction. And I have discussed many a times that uh, normally uh, it is I mean advisable or suggestive of having pumped I mean impeller 
equipped with a few backward governments because forward governments as I said that uh, although efficiency will be I mean head developed by the pump will be higher if it is equipped with a few forward governments, but, but it is having another problem. So, if I have an impeller with you know backward curve van. So, this is the impeller of a radial flow pump impeller and if I draw the you know so this is the three dimensional view and this is the flow area. So, this is the flow area so water will or fluid will go out from the impeller through the passes between two adjacent blades and if the diameter of the impeller is let us say D which is circular in shape and if this width is diameter is D 2 and width is B 2, then flow area this is very important flow area that equal to pi D 2 into B 2. So, this is the flow area through the uh, flow area through which liquid is flowing out from the pump and again I need to draw the velocity triangles because I am trying to express I am trying to obtain the mathematical expression of the specific speed and, and for that of course, I need to use the uh, definition that see the speed of a geometrical similar pumps or machine that would deliver you know unit head unit discharge when working under unit head. So, again if I take this blade uh, a particular blade and if I draw the velocity triangle at the outlet that is very important. So, this is my uh, blade velocity or tangential velocity at the outlet this is relative velocity and this is the flow velocity C R 2 and this is C 2 and this is W 2 this is U 2 and these are the components. So, this is U 2 this is C theta 2 and this is W theta 2. So, and it is rotating let us say at an angular velocity omega and if I assume no swirl at the inlet. So, velocity triangles at the inlet will be like this W 1 this is C 1 and this is U 1. So, uh, I mean what is the volume flow rate through the pump? So, Q that is flow rate flow rate through the pump will be equal to how much? So, flow rate through the pump will be equal to flow velocity into flow area into flow area. So, this is very important flow velocity into flow area. So, what is flow velocity here? That is C R 2 and flow area is pi D 2 into B 2. So, this is the flow rate that I can expect from this pump and C R 2 will depends upon the you know uh, absolute velocity at the outlet and that also will depends upon the blade angle at the outlet uh, flow angle. So, now discharge cube from this expression I can obtain that discharge cube I mean pi is constant. So, if I go to my next slide next slide then what I can write. So, I have obtained discharge I have obtained discharge cube. cube that equal that equal to pi d 2 b 2 into C R 2. So, this is area and this is velocity this is velocity of course, flow velocity this is area. So, from this expression I can write that cube varies as C R 2 into d 2 into b 2 
because pi is constant. So, now that is q varies as flow velocity, diameter of the impeller of the outlet and width. Now, this d 2 is proportional to b 2 because to obtain a you know fixed flow rate if I I mean uh, suppose if I keep on increasing q then if I increase d 2 of course I need to increase b 2. So, this is I mean or vice versa that I can say that uh, or I can write that you know b 2 is proportional to d 2 right. So, I am writing here d 2 is the diameter of the impeller at outlet b 2 is the width of the impeller and shear 2 is the flow velocity at the outlet. So, these three quantity you have obtained. So, if B 2 varies D 2 that means, uh, width of the impeller is proportional to this diameter. I mean uh, it cannot be I mean to obtain a desired flow rate if I now uh, of course, increase d 2 if I would like to obtain then b 2 has to increase. So, if I write this equation 1, so and this is 2. So, now from 1 and 2 from equations 1 and 2 I can obtain q is proportional to what that is you know q is proportional to d 2 square into c r 2. This is d 2 square into c r 2 I am writing this is equation 3. Note that the c r 2 is the flow velocity that is proportional to root of you know 2 g h rather root of I can write h or g into h. So, I am writing proportional to root 2 root g h. So, I am proportional I writing is proportional to h or head developed by the pump. So, now what I can write and this u 2 that I write because pi d 2 b 2 into u 2 this is very important because u is very important to uh, which is related which relates d 2 and you know speed. So, u 2 is equal to blade velocity at the outlet. So, I am writing this is the blade velocity at the outlet blade velocity at the outlet that equal to pi d 2 n by 60. So, u 2 varies as d 2 into n. So, this is very important d 2 into n and u 2 also varies as c r 2 because uh, this is a velocity triangle. So, if I increase u 2 or if I increase c r 2 u 2 has to increase that is what is. So, now uh, what I can write from this expression that means, uh, c r 2 u 2 varies as d 2 n u 2 varies as c r 2 whereas, c r 2 varies as root h that means, that means that is u 2 varies as root h that I can write. So, using this equation 4 and this is using equation 4. I am writing that u 2 is very u 2 varies as root h. On the other hand u 2 is u 2 varies as root root d 2 uh, I mean u 2 varies as d 2 into n. So, from this what I can write that u 2 varies as d 2 into n that is diameter of the impeller at the outlet and speed of the pump and which itself varies as root of h. That means, from there I can write that you know root h varies as d 2 into n. So, this is the equation 5 that I obtain. So, I have obtained that root h is equal to you know uh, d 2 into n. So, uh, what we obtain that uh, u 2. So, what we obtain that 
u2 that is the blade velocity at the outlet which is you know proportional to the flow velocity cr2 and that is proportional to root h that is the head being developed by the pump. Now, u2 that if we can try to recall our you know previous equation where u2 that is tangential velocity at the outlet tangential velocity at the outlet or sometimes it is known as blade speed at the outlet outlet this u2 varies as d2 into n from its definition. So, from these two I can write from these two expression I can write say uh, from these two expression I can write that d2 n varies as root varies as from these two expression I can write d2 n varies as root h therefore, I can write this is very important. So, d 2 that is diameter of the impeller that varies as root of h by root of h divided by n this is very important. Now, if I try to recall the volume flow rate expression of volume flow rate. So, what is the expression of volume flow rate note that C r 2 where C r 2 is the flow velocity at the outlet flow velocity at outlet. So, we have seen that you know B 2 proportional to D because if I would like to obtain higher Q then if I need to increase D 2 then B 2 has to be increased. Similarly, U 2 is proportional to C R 2 that is from the velocity tangle you obtain. So, higher U 2 will give a higher C 2 and that will essentially lift, give, gives to higher C R 2. Now, the volume flow rate cube that is volume or flow rate I can write flow rate that if I try to recall that what is the expression of Q? Q is very important Q is equal to you know D 2 square Q is equal to D 2 square into C R 2 that is the flow velocity. So, rather varies as not equal to. So, Q varies as D 2 square into C R 2 that is from equation 3 that is from equation 3. Now, D 2 itself is root h by n d 2 varies as root h by n and C r 2 root varies as C r 2 varies as C r 2 varies as root of h. So, if I you know put these two values over here then volume flow rate varies as you know root h by n square into root of h that means varies as h into root h by n square that means varies as h for 3 by 2 by n square. So, this is very important that uh, for flow rate of the pump varies as h for 3 by 2 to by n by n square. Now, I would like to use the definition of the specific speed that is speed of a geometrical speed of geometrical similar machines or pumps that would deliver unit discharge when working under unit head that means when q is equal to unit then head the pump will deliver unit discharge working under unit head of course and that time the speed n should be the specific speed or ns of the pump that is from the definition so this is the specific speed right so q is equal to 1 and h is equal to 1 that means this is from the definition this is from the definition of specific speed that pump you know speed of a geometrical similar pumps that will deliver unit discharge and working under unit head. So, n will be n s. So, now if I write q if I remove the proportionality that means from this expression I can write q will be equal to rather if I go to the next slide if I go to the next slide and if I remove the proportionality then I can write I can introduce q which will be equal to a proportionality constant h power 3 by 2 divided by n square. And to obtain the proportionality constant k this is proportionality constant 
constant. So, this is proportionality constant and when q is equal to 1 according to the definition of specific speed h will be 1 and then n will be n s. So, from there I can obtain k will be equal to 1 n s square divided by 1 that means n s square. So, if I now put the magnitude of k over here that means q is equal to what I obtain n s square h power 3 by 2 divided by n square that will simply give us specific speed n s square is equal to q n square divided by h power 3 by 2 that is what we will obtain from the from, from the definition that is n square h q divided by h power 3 by 3 by 2 therefore, n s will be equal to n root cube divided by h power 3 by 4. So, this is the specific speed of the pump. So, this is the specific speed of pump. So, this is the specific speed of the pump in the dimensional dimensional form. This is dimensional form. So, why it is important we need to know because as I said you that the specific speed is important. This is a speed of the geometrical similar machines that is geometrically identical in shape, but not in size. So, if we may vary the diameter of the impeller, but still knowing the specific speed of a pump, we can predict the you know geometrical similar machines the rather performance of the geometrical similar machines that means what would be the head rather what would be the head developed by the pump if I would like to obtain this much amount of discharge if I know the specific speed and if I allow the pump to run at a at certain speed. So, this is very important to predict the performance of a pump rather predict the performance of the pumps belongs to homologous series that means, the pumps of geometrically similar in shape I mean geometrically identical in shape, but not in size size may differ, but if they are you know shape then specific speed can be utilized to predict the performance. Now, with this we will proceed towards or to discuss about a few or other several aspects of pumping system design. So, now I proceed to see what are the different aspects or the several issues of pumping system design. This is very important rather this is very important to the system designer you know industrial engineer rather practicing engineer. So, I will now discuss about pumping system design. This is very important. So, let me discuss a few important issues. We will take up an example and we will see how we can really calculate what would be the flow rate when the pumps are connected in parallel. I mean when I mean two dissimilar pumps are connected in parallel and of course, uh, what are the remedies, how we can overcome that, uh, what are the, what will be the problems and what are the remedies to overcome that problem we will discuss by taking up an example. But before I go to discuss that, let us first discuss about several aspects of pumping system design. So, while we are designing a pumping system as a pumping system design engineer, I should know the what kind of pump we need to install in that system. So, we first need to calculate that system requirement that is very important system requirement. What are the requirement of the system? System requirements that means, while we are going to design a pumping system we need to know three important quantities. One is rather two important quantities very important for the pumping system designer specific speed also important because I mean if I know the specific speed then I can calculate performance of a pump rather performance of pumps which belongs to uh, which belong to homologous series. So, what is the total discharge? This is very important total discharge or flow rate cube 
that is meter cube per second. So, this is very important that means what is the total amount of discharge that pump needs to supply rather a group of pump needs to supply when I am designing a pumping system. Number 2 what will be the total head that pump needs to develop that is total head that will be developed by the pump pump or pumps rather pump. So, now uh, depending upon the requirement of total discharge that is process requirement. So, this is process requirement, this is process requirement, it is very specific and it varies from process to process. If it is a power plant industry, we may require one uh, certain discharge, if it is a any cement industry, we may vary the discharge. So, it is very you know very smart specific about the process. So, this is process specific requirement. So, this is process specific requirement, this is total discharge, someone should know and that should be supplied to the design engineer rather to the pumping system design engineer by the process people. So, this total discharge of flow rate that information should be supplied to the pumping system design engineer by the process people because this is process specific requirement, it varies from process to process. Knowing, so this is very important, knowing the knowing the total discharge that uh, we now select pumps of course and the total that head that will be developed by the pump that a system designer needs to calculate how uh, that means system engineer system design engineer shall calculate rather will will calculate system designer engineer will calculate he will calculate he or she will calculate the total requirement total head requirement total head requirement by how because it has two component that means the static height static height difference between the pumping station and the delivery points. Static height difference between the pump you know pumping house rather pump impeller axis level and delivery points, delivery points plus total dynamic head loss. So, static height difference between the pumping system or the pump system rather the axis of the impeller or the where the pump house is located and the delivery points rather where pump should supply or discharge water or any fluid and the total dynamic head loss which will takes into account the losses in the frictional that will take into account the frictional losses. frictional losses in pipes and also there will be some bends, fittings, valves. So, we need to take into account another you know minor losses, minor losses that is due to bends fittings etcetera. Normally, we take uh, 15 percent of the uh, 15 percent of total loss that we need that we consider normally to uh, keep the system in a safer side. So, a system designer 
here she will calculate the total head requirement by calculating the frictional losses using dart series back equation in the pipeline because if we know the recommended speed. So, while we will discuss in detail about how we can calculate the total frictional losses if we apply dart series back equation to calculate frictional head loss and then uh, as I said you that whenever you are having a pumping system we should have a few valves to control the flow rate there will be bends, fittings all those things and we need to take into account the losses because of the presence of all those things and we normally consider 15 percent and we call it the minor losses 50 percent of the total loss. So, calculating this total head loss we know that what will be the total head requirement from that pumping station pumping station and we know the discharge other flow rate that is a process specific requirement that will be supplied by the process people that ok we need this amount of water in this place this amount of water in this place. So, knowing fully the total discharge as well as the total head requirement total head requirement that is total q and total h right meter cube per second and meter this is meter and this is meter cube per second a designer should select what kind of pump should be suitable for that particular system so based on the requirement of total discharge and total head that we need to develop that the total head that the pumping system need to develop pumping system designer should select the pump should select the type of pump will be installed this is very important. So, as I said you if we can if you try to recall that in, the, in my first lecture we have discussed about the you know pump classification and where we have clearly stated that normally we go for radial flow pump. So, if I write in the next slide. So, what is the next point that the system designer knows the total discharge that we need to obtain from the pumping system and the total head the pump should develop. Now, system designer should select the pump that is and that is what I am telling that in, in my first lecture I have discussed that we normally go for radial flow pump because this is very important that what kind of pump we need to develop or what kind of pump we need to install rather uh, what kind of pump we need to uh, you know procure to meet the demand radial we normally go for radial flow pump when we require actually uh, uh, so we, we need to go for radial flow pump when we normally require requirement is you know low to moderate low to moderate discharge and moderate to high head this is very important that we normally go for radial flow pump when we need low to moderate discharge against moderate to high head our situation is that because that is very clear. So, while you are calculating total head and total flow rate then it is clear that ok what kind of pump I need to install over there or else if we need that high amount of discharge rather high Q that is very important in mines uh, coal mines and also irrigation purposes that is uh, I discussed against low head then normally we go for axial flow pump normally we go for axial flow pump. So, these two are normally employed normally installed these two you know uh, two types of pumps are normally you know installed. So, either you have to go for radial flow pump or the axial flow pump depending upon the requirement and that requirement will come from the system total discharge requirement will, co will come which is very very much process specific that will come from the process people and total head that a system design will calculate and based on these two quantities a designer should select that whether I he or she will go for the radial flow pump or the axial flow pump. Sometimes we need to go for positive displacement pump that is a separate topic and I will discuss the positive displacement pump. This is also a another kind of pump and we have discussed why it is called positive displacement. So, positive displacement pumps are very much suitable for very high head 
for very high head while discharge will remain constant will be constant. That means, if we need to supply a constant flow rate against a very high head then we go for the positive displacement pump and we have to install positive displacement pump fine. So, so far what we whatever uh, so far whatever we discussed today and we understood that we need to calculate first two things whenever you are going to design a system first we need to work out that what will be the total discharge that pumps or pumping system should supply that will come from the process and that varies from process to process because this is very much process specific. And knowing the information from the process people we can calculate okay find this much amount of water we need to supply from this pumping system against the head and that will be calculated by the system designer by calculating the static height difference between the pumping station at the discharge points as well as the total loss frictional losses in the pipelines. And we need to take into account the minor losses because of the presence of valves, bends, fittings and that is normally taken 15 percent of the total loss. So, knowing these two quantities designers should select that whether he or she will go for the radial flow pump or axial flow pump. And then uh, another aspect will come that ok fine if we go for radial flow pump and axial flow pump sometimes maybe it, it, it might happens that after 5 years or after 10 years or after 2 years down the line again for higher process requirement we need to install another new pump and then how can we connect the pump if we need to supply more amount of you know flow rate then probably we need to supply you know, install pump in parallel and then what will be the problems and how we can uh, sort out the problem that I will discuss with taking up an you know example. On the other hand, we also go for positive displacement pump where we require very high head against a constant flow rate. So, with this, I stop here today and I will continue this discussion in my next lecture. Thank you.